Hey guys, so this will be my final update to this build. Um, this is my Detonate Date Elementalist. I'm level 93 and I think I'm just going to farm a couple more maps just to get some currency and that, that's going to be it. I'm not investing anymore into this character. And I'll explain later why I um, this is not really my cup of tea for a build. I'll talk about the pros and cons and what I've learned. But I've reached level 93. Um, I have the standard passive tree here. I'll attach the POB in the link below and I went with the primalist skill tree just because of the um, charms. They are pretty good. Uh, right here I have the chance to cover enemies in ash. This essentially acts or replaces uh, polaric devastation which goes for about two divines. So that's pretty much a good replacement for that and also you get the uh, remove curses and elemental ailments which is quite useful as well. And then here I have Corpses Spawn having increased maximum life. This actually increases your damage by quite a bit. So I think Primalist, because of uh, the, the variety of charms that you can use, makes it for a very good secondary ascendancy. Um, items wise, the only upgrades I made was I got a pair of gloves with exposure. I bought this for, I believe, 50 chaos pretty good deal I think and same weapon same shield uh, I, I put this in the talisman uh, corruption bench and I was able to get 12% maximum life which is pretty cool and then everything else is about the same uh, I dropped this and I figured I could use it just because the enemies ignited by you gets takes 7% increased damage so I think that should be good I'm not too sure but I just went with it um, and also, it's not obvious, but I was able to get enough currency to purchase, um, uh, wh what's that, instilling orbs to automate my flasks. Because trust me, when you're playing a build that already requires you to press a ton of buttons, you don't really want to be pressing your flasks as well. So my goal was really farming those currency to uh, automate these flasks. It makes a huge quality of life difference. Um, but yeah, that's about it, and I'm going to showcase some videos of me clearing a map, bosses, and talk about the pros and cons of this build. Alright, so we're going to start off with a T16 Veritania playing in the background while I talk about the build. So, since it's my first time playing this build, uh, one of the main things I had to learn was how to play it effectively. And with an Ignite playstyle, especially with DD, you would want to essentially desecrate to spawn a bunch of corpses hit DD a couple times to try to get or rather fish for the big ignite on the enemy mob and once you have the ignite on them you simply want to keep Arcanist brand uptime on the boss or the mob um, Arcanist brand I believe lasts for only about 4 seconds so really you are running around and casting Arcanist brand on the mob if they already have a big ignite on them. That was one of the, the thing I had to get used to just because initially I was simply desecrating DD, desecrating DD and it wasn't really um, an effective way to play the build. So this really doesn't matter when you're mapping or even when you're killing map bosses just because they're, they don't really, they're not too much of a problem but if you are fighting high, uh, bosses like Maven or Shaper Guardians, uh, Elder Guardians, then it matters because you will want to fish for that big ignite on the enemy and this usually just takes maybe a couple casts of DD and once you have that big ignite on them you simply just keep Arcanist Brand up and just run around in circles and let the enemy burn with the maximum ignite DPS that you put on them. So yeah that's one of the main things I've learned. Um, Although I tried doing that with Maven and it still took me about 10 minutes and I died a couple times too. So I'm not too sure if this build is the greatest for endgame or rather pinnacle bossing. Um, I've checked out other streamers as well and I think ideally you would want to use a different build. Um, this build is great for getting you all the way up to T16s, getting all your watchstones and that's about it. Um, for a bosser, pinnacle bosser, you would want to play something else. And also uh, Val DD is super important so 
especially against tanky bosses, you would want to make sure to keep spawning Desecrate uh, on top of the boss just so you have a bunch of corpses before you hit Val DD. Just so the explosions keep going off and at that point you just want to again keep Arcanist Brand up on the boss. And um, there are further upgrades I could make to the build, uh, like including a replica Ember Wake just to get the uh, faster ignite. But I think at this point I'm just going to uh, invest in something else. Um, but one of the biggest DPS increase for me was uh, going dual curse. So getting exposure on my gloves so I could remove Wave of Conviction from the build and then including Elemental Weakness along with flame ability that increased my dps quite a bit and as you can see here the um Veritania kill was actually decent i would say i'm still not playing it perfectly because i'm just too used to casting dd you know you want to deal damage instead of just maintaining your arcanist brand and i did a lot of harvests and this is one of the things that elementalist dd is great for is because is a uh, stuff like harvest and expedition just because you blow up a bunch of mobs and maybe you have a high HP mob on the ground, you blow that up and usually one shots a lot of bosses. And I'll show that later in the uh, Maven Invitation as well. That's one of the, uh, the things that this build excels in. But yeah, um, Harvest is great, Expedition is great. Uh, and then right here, we are doing a 10-way Maven Invitation. This is particularly great for DD just because you blow up one boss and then you just have the other boss walk over the corpse and you blow up that boss instantly as well. But uh, my next build, I'll probably want to try out something with the Hierophant. Uh, I did find a Pledge of Hands, uh, the uh, foil version of it, so I'm thinking of making something with it. I haven't decided yet. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any cool build ideas or any unusual non-meta skills that you've tried out and you think is exciting. Uh, I'm definitely looking to explore something more non-meta after playing the most meta build. But yeah, I would say if you are a beginner or you've never played this build, don't let it uh, deceive you that it's you know the best build in the game just because it's very it takes a lot of effort a lot of buttons that you're pressing a lot of kiting and a lot of understanding how the build mechanics work as well but if you play it right obviously it's one of the strongest build in the game